Hello guys, welcome back to El Merengue Cule. We are moments away from kickoff, but really quick, I just want to go over Ronald Koeman's lineup before the Dynamo Kiev game. It's pretty interesting. In the goalkeeper position, Ter Stegen is back. That's right, guys. I mean, Neto, fantastic job, but obviously, we love Ter Stegen. Now, the, the second big shock is De Jong at the left center back position instead of Linglet. I think that uh, we talked about it in the pregame, but still surprised me. I thought that would be more of like a tactic to implement at halftime. If uh, the game's not really going out your way, maybe push for a more attacking position. But we're seeing it straight off the kickoff. I'm thinking Ronald Koeman has a very attacking mentality. Sergio Test on the right back. Again, pushing for that more attacking playing style. Maybe looking for that press. Pjanic Busquets as the two defensive mids. This is the first time we see them together, at least in the starting lineup. Without the young in the middle, pretty interesting. Uh, Messi does start in the middle. He probably won't get rested. Pedri on the right side, Fati on the left side, and Griezmann up top. I'm hoping that Griezmann picks up another goal that he keeps building up on on his confidence. But without wasting any more time, I will catch you guys at halftime to break down exactly how we have been playing. I'm So the first half just ended and like I said right before the game Kuman is gonna be looking for that hard start the hard press high pressure lots of quick passing And that's exactly what we saw the first five minutes I really don't remember us losing the ball apart from maybe like a shot that was deflected by the keeper But Dynamo Kiev did not even touch the ball at all until that fourth minute where Messi gets brought down into the box No debates there a clear penalty Messi converts it as we all expected it what I want to give credit to this goal is going to be down to Kuman. Again, he was a guy that from the formation lineup, from the mentality that he that he set onto the players, he told them, and, and it was evident, push for that first goal, push hard. And, you know, after that goal, uh, in, in minute four, I was curious, how is Barcelona going to react and how is Dynamo Kiev going to react? Barcelona continued to do exactly what we were doing. We get uh, minute six, another opportunity from Pedri where he hits the crossbar. I thought it went in. They showed the replay. It did not go in. Then uh, Ansu Fati gets another chance. Minute six, in the same minute, where it falls, he shoots it. It falls to Griezmann. Goalkeeper's on the ground. Griezmann misses, an, misses a sitter. An open goal. Ay, Griezmann. Ay, Griezmann. Yeah, I mean, uh, he just has to put that away. But you get this sensation that the, the system is working well. The outside backs are pretty much acting as wingers. The, the, there's a lot of quick passes in between the midfielders, the attackers. There's a lot of intercalating movement between the, the, the wingers and Griezmann and Messi. And overall, the system was working very well. Now, yes, you could make the argument Dynamo Kiev is not the strongest of teams. And, and I guess maybe a, a bit of a better situated team, the system won't work as well. And to, to that, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, Dynamo Kiev initially did not look the best. They, they looked a little bit intimidated. They were sitting back just kind of trying to... It seems to me like they were trying to prevent like a 6-0, an 8-0. Because that's what it initially seemed like. Messi gets another chance, minute 17, where he shoots it across the body, across the goalkeeper. However, he, the goalkeeper does get a hand to it. And I want to highlight his performance. The 18-year-old Dynamo Kiev goalkeeper has been having an astonishing performance. Which is kind of like this thing that, we, that, that we've been seeing, you know. The Alaves goalkeeper, fantastic last week. And it's exactly what I, I, I uh, pinpointed in the pregame. We are going to get the chances, but we have to start converting. That ratio to shots... To goals, we have to be diminishing that. Right now, it is too big. It's too bad. We're missing way too many clear opportunities. That in in more important games and bigger games, we're gonna get a lot less opportunities, and it's gonna come down to how well we are able to convert those chances. From that point on, I couldn't help but notice that the midfield, uh, mainly talking about uh, Pjanic and Busquets, were looking a bit slow. In the 21st minute, I think it was Busquets gives up the ball, and in an attempt to win the ball fast to keep the attack going, this was pretty close to the Dynamo Kiev box. He dives in, doesn't get a tackle, misses the ball completely, misses the player. Now the, the player, I think it was Rodriguez, uh, the Dynamo Kiev winger, attacking right down the middle of the field. And, and Pjanic knew he wasn't going to beat him with speed, so he did the same thing Busquets did. He dove in, tried to win the tackle, because again, he didn't, he wasn't going to beat him with speed. Which and, and Rodriguez evades the tackle very well, and suddenly we find ourselves with our back against the wall. And it's uh, three of our defenders against four of their attackers. And, uh, you know, the, our defense did a great job neutralizing the attack, 
but that was the the switch of momentum. Dynamo Kiev identified the key that's gonna unlock their attack, the key that makes us vulnerable, and it's that counter attack. It's it's trying to beat our defenders, our, our midfielders with speed. And from that 20th minute all the way to probably around the 40th minute, it was honestly Dynamo Kiev getting the most opportunities in which Ter Stegen actually pulled off a massive save, one with his foot to prevent a crucial cross, and another header which he deflected with his forearm. Again, Ter Stegen showing his world class despite a long-term injury. Like I mentioned earlier, Ansu Fati's looking great, Pedri's looking pretty good, Griezmann, had he converted that chance, I think uh, all of our perspectives on him would have been a, a lot different. But to conclude this half, I think Ronald Koeman is going to be a bit of upset that we're only going 1-0 into the halftime. Uh, mainly highlighting the amount of clear goal scoring opportunities we have. Hopefully we can turn that around. I do want to see uh, us get a high scoreboard. And I'm not just saying that because it looks good. But we have to start converting our chances. We have to be more efficient. I will see you guys at the end of the game. All right, guys, the final whistle just blew. We did get the, the three points. The score, the final score was 2-1. But it was a pretty bad performance from Barcelona. Uh, the majority of the second half was just pretty shit, not going to lie. And then, I mean, we talked about the first half, how for about half of it, it was pretty bad as well. Uh, from the beginning, just how pretty much the first half ended, Dan Mokiev was the, the team putting the most pressure on us. And I think it was like in the first 10 minutes, Ter Stegen had three crucial saves that if he didn't make, Dynamo Kiev would have been ahead. And, you know, we, we also had our fair bit of chances. We had a messy free kick. We had a, a few other opportunities in which the, uh, the goalkeeper from Dynamo Kiev came up massively. I mean, what a performance the 18-year-old had. You know, from the first 10 minutes, we got the, the sensation that this game was Barcelona's and that Dynamo Kiev didn't stand a chance. But it was quite the opposite. It quickly turned into a game where either team, it was a 50-50 game, either team could have won it, either team could have taken the points home. We got lucky, I think, to take the, the points home, I think, Ter Stegen saves. It saved us massively. Uh, and overall, this second half, the, the system didn't flow well. There was no cohesion between the midfield and the attack. The defense looked shaky. The Youngs uh, at center back in second half looked pretty bad. And eventually, Lenglet was brought on. Which, you know, it led me to think that... And I say, again, I say this every other video. Where is Ricky Puch? I can't help but think that the system would work better with Ricky Puch. Because, you know, the main argument of why Ricky Puch doesn't play is because, on paper, he is not that defensive player. He's not that Casemiro style of player that he's going to make those hard tackles every time. And, and yeah, that's 100% right. But, but uh, I mean, the Barcelona's playing style doesn't really rely too much on that defensive center mid. I mean, honestly, when do you really see Busquets defending? Honestly, not that much. Now, if you compare it to a system like Real Madrid, where Casemiro is a crucial piece to their, uh, to their system just because of how much Ramos presses and, and, you know, how their playing style is, yeah, you need a defensive mid for Real Madrid. But for Barcelona... You need a bit more speed, and and you know Ricky Puch is gonna give it his all from the first whistle to the to the last whistle. You know he's gonna be looking to, to give those filtrated passes, uh, which leads me to the next point that where's Griezmann? Where's Griezmann? He had a, a another again apart from that sitter that he missed in the first uh, ten minutes. He, he he was missing. Did he ever touch the ball? I don't know. What what is going on with Griezmann? Is it the fact that he just doesn't know where the space is? He doesn't know how to create the space. He doesn't know where to move. Is it his issue, or is it the, the rest of the team that isn't really looking for him? Or a combination of both, because honestly, you know, I, I look at Griezmann and at times, yes, he does create the space, but for the most part, he's marked up, he's not, I mean, he, he is actively moving, but not into dangerous positions. He is involved with the build-up, but isn't involved with the, the termination of the play. But then you look at Messi, and, and Messi, his first instinct is look for Pedri, look for, for Ansu Fati on the left-hand side. He goes into Griezmann's space to which Griezmann has to react and has to move away from that danger zone. So, ugh, what do you guys think? Do you think it's mainly down to Griezmann's uh, fault? Do you think it's down to, to the team, to Messi not really looking for him? Let me know down below, but something has got to change. And, you know, you could see the frustration of the players, and especially when you see Pique getting out of the back line, for trying to get the goal, and, of course, he, he does. He pulled out Ramos. 
He found his way to the box. Not much movement for him, but a spectacular header. I mean, right to the to the, the corner. I mean, the goalkeeper expected it to be towards that near post. Piquet switched it up, put it towards the far post. Which, for me, this goal highlights um, one of the missing areas of the team, which is the lack of striker that clearly Griezmann is not fulfilling. Uh, and then you see a tall figure like uh, Piquet get in there and, and you know, off his first shot, off his first header, look and find the, the goal that, that gives us a little bit of a security blanket, which, uh, you know, it leads me to, to questions of uh, just exactly how much is our attack lacking from the lack of a center forward of an, an attacker, possibly of the likes of Lautaro Martinez. We mentioned how Lenglet was brought on for uh, Frankie de Jong in the roughly the 70, 73rd minute. And, well, right after that substitution, in the 74th minute, Dynamo Kiev puts a great cross in. Uh, Lenglet actually, he doesn't get, yeah, I mean, he gets beat to the ball. The Dynamo Kiev gets a shot on. Another fantastic save by Ter Stegen, but the ball rebounds, and they are able to put it in, to which the scoreboard is now a 2-1. And then that's a lot of pressure to us, because, again, like I had just mentioned, a game that should have been secured off the first 10 minutes is now a 50-50 game. And they had chances. They could have made it 2-2. We did get lucky to, uh, to, to come out on top. In fact, they did score the 2-2. However, we got lucky that the ball uh, went out of bounds in the corner kick before the, the, the Dynamo Kiev player put the ball on the back of the net. Overall, I'm a bit frustrated with this game. I feel like it was uh, a step backwards from what we've been building on. Again, the finishing is bad. The defending was bad. The midfield was pretty bad. Uh, frustrating game, got lucky to take home the three points in the Champions League. Hopefully, hopefully, we need to see an improvement against Real Betis in the weekend. But with that being said, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, help us reach our goal of getting 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That'll be massive, 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 guys. And as always, Visca Barca!